Undertaker haunted house back then, which I would love to go to. <laughs> Dude, like, <laughs> like you look at some of their old lineup for mazes, and it's like, dude, I wish there was like, I wish that was during the time era when YouTube was a thing, because you know, thankfully, because of YouTube, people now film these mazes, so yeah. you can literally go back and watch most of them. But back then, in those days. It wasn't really a thing, so there's, like, no footage. Yeah, like, zero. zero. There's not even, like, pictures, for the most part, of I've, some of these mazes. Like, <laughs> I've found, like, one picture of, like, a facade for one of them. I found a, like, three-paragraph description of what the Undertaker maze was. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, you started out at a funeral home, but the funeral home, like, one scene in the funeral home, I don't know if it was at the end or at the beginning... But it was like the funeral home was on fire for Kane. Oh, that's cool. Um, was it so music playing? Kane, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that much. I know that he was uh, kind of a instrumental part then. Yeah. For everything. Um, that's pretty much all I know. I don't know anything <laughs> about that. And the title, Undertaker, No Mercy, which are some, yeah. No Mercy at the time was a pay-per-view that yeah. they would have so yeah. <laughs> talk about a tie-in <laughs> yeah I, um, I believe it was their October pay-per-view too yeah no mercy no mercy for you what I mean they did a mummy maze back then you know based on the film well which, that was their year round oh like, that was the year round one then that, yeah before it was the universal house of horrors it was a mummy haunted house well, I know that they had Van Helsing for a while as well. Van was their yeah. walkthrough, and but which Van Helsing was very much the house of horrors. Yeah, they just decorated up a little bit, yeah. and turned it into Universal. They had a baby bat on the <laughs> on the bridge. Yeah. Like. So, Jimmy, to take this back for you, 1986 was the year that they had opened up and uh, here for Hollywood. 
Horror Nights. Yeah. And they had to, unfortunately, they had to close because a character got a little over, over enthusiastic in their performance and fell in between two of the tram cars and was crushed to death. Holy yeah. shit. Okay. And that's why they had to stop. Um, and they wouldn't hold another Halloween event for six years after that. So it came back 91-ish, 92-ish, 92. Okay. And then how and long was it there for? Yeah, it went on like a little streak and then it went away again in like 2000s. 92. Like Okay, so it was there for 99, 2000, and then it came back in 2006. And that's when John Murray took up the range. Interesting, okay. So, I don't know, the way that I kind of figured we would do this, but she's got, do you have like what was going on each year in front of you? Yeah, I do. So what was the very first year? Take us back. (laughs) <laughs> Nine, yeah, the very first year of Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood. What did they have? Um, signature attraction was Terror Tram. Damn. Uh, which was the nighttime <laughs> version of the Backlot Tour. Okay. Since someone got ran over. Um, as far as it goes back that far, it doesn't really tell us the lineup. It doesn't really start giving us lineups until 92. Okay, so, so go to 92. So basically during that time frame, obviously, all the event was was a nighttime terror tram experience. Right. Yeah. And Unless they had some sort of scare zones going on as yeah. well, but... So yeah. in 92, there wasn't really a whole lot going on as far as mazes. They did Maze of the Maniacs. And Nightmare Alley. Okay. And they had Terror Tram. And then they had... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15... 16 shows happening. Holy in shit. one ride. The one ride, E.T.'s Adventure. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, my God. The Bring it shows. on. <laughs> Here were the list of shows. Penn and Teller, The Amazing Frankenstein, Dungeon of Terror... Tower of Torture, Carnival of Carnage, Chucky's In Your Face Insult, Julia Wilde's Roadside Cuisine, Death Globe, The Wild Wild Witch Hunt, The Living Deadheads Review, Club Fright, Burn and Berry Swap Meat, Beetlejuice's Graveyard Review, The Voodoo Gurus, Zombie Spectacular, and Backdraft. Damn. Damn. (laughs) So, that sounds more like those are attractions. Like it's, scare zones or experiences or something. Yeah, they're all listed as shows. Interesting. Well, does it say what I the know. mazes are? Like what they're about? Uh, let's see. Maze of Maniacs was one of two haunted mazes that was featured during Halloween Horror Nights in '92. And the description says, "Take a turn for the worse in this wicked, winding asylum of murders and misfits," and that's all that we get. So it'd be a pri- like a prison setting. Yeah. Um, okay, what's the other one? Nightmare Alley. Yeah, what's Nightmare Alley about? Nightmare Alley is a house of horror where movie monsters and maniacs invite you in for a bite. Alright. Like a hod- <laughs> Sounds like a hodgepodge house. Yeah. Um, they both sound like hodgepodge. So, okay. So, 92, a bunch of shows, a couple houses. 93, uh, is there any shit difference? Ton of shows. No, the, the next difference, the next change goes to 97. Okay. The haunted mazes were Monster Aquarium. Monster Aquarium. <laughs> a classic monster maze. That's Crypt right. Keeper Film Vault. Hell yeah. Oh, and Area 51. Those yeah. are the mazes? Okay. Those were the mazes. And then oh, the shit. shows at this time were Beetlejuice's uh, Rockin' Graveyard Review, Creepy Animals. I wish they'd bring that back. Circus of Freaks, and Bill and Ted's Excellent Halloween Adventure. So that would be the first year of Bill and Ted's. Damn, they 20, had Bill. That was what year did you 97. Say? So 97. Okay, so let's go. So this is the first real year of what we're going to do on this show. Let's break down Halloween Horror Nights 97. So, the first, um, the first house, pick whichever house you wanted. Monster Aquarium. We'll just go in order. Okay. (laughs) 
So what do they say is the... Monster Aquarium was a walkthrough experience that was created in the Waterworld front of house oh, and stage area. Due to the odd location, it relied on weird vignettes, animatronic stunts, and actors in and on the water. What? Wow. Which is awesome because that's something that we talk about all the time, that they should be using that more often, and they don't. Damn, that sounds badass. <laughs> that sounds badass for sure. <laughs> like... Bring I'd be back, terrified. Bring it back. I'd be terrified to be like walking, then all of a sudden have like one of the actors just dive bomb in the water, like next to you, and like splash you. Like Dude. if they came like falling out of nowhere and hit the water, or if you're on a raft. Oh fuck! <laughs> like that would be amazing. at night in that water. I'd be shitting my pants. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, that so that one's number one by far. <laughs> what What else is there? Classic monster maze. One of the four haunted mazes, oh wait, short but fun maze of classic Universal Monsters. Ten miles, continue on to California. Which is expected for yeah. Universal. But thinking of how it was probably back then, okay, yeah, <laughs> it might have been a little corny. Might have been like they're like softer. But that's a go-to property. Like oh yeah, for them. I mean, come Universal on. Studios, you have to, yeah. you're bringing this like, you're trying to like revitalize this, you have to uh, really go with a monster base for sure. Yeah. Okay, what's the next one? So next is Crypt Keeper Film Hall. And they go, they go hard on this description. You ready for this? Yeah. Oh, shit. Modern Film Monsters. Okay. <laughs> is that all we get? That's all we get. Oh shit! Oh, that's what I said. I was being sarcastic. They go hard. Yeah, so... that's not hard at all. <laughs> like, does that mean? I'm guessing it would be like, like Jason and Freddy. I'm guessing. It doesn't say anything else but wow. that. Just modern monsters. So that doesn't leave I much mean, to the imagination. I guess there. it could be original, but. Okay. All right. So, so after that. Crypt Keeper Film Vault, which was just basic... Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Becomes Area 51. And the description in this one says, Aliens in cold storage and running amok. Amok, 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 amok. All right. <laughs> um, Sounds like a pretty... Straight generic, uh, probably gray alien <laughs> of, uh, yeah, well, type of maze. Yeah, I take on the gray alien. Yeah. Um, do you think out of all those four that the aquarium one is the best one? Oh, oh God, yes. Sure. Just from the description alone, and when you wanted to come back, you know it was the best one. I mean, yeah. I mean, from the name, you're like, what? <laughs> but then it's like, well, as soon as you read that description, it's gonna like, Bang. damn, it's like that would be so cool, just because it's so different, you know. And I feel like. With Universal, you know, we're getting so much of the same stuff now that it's kind of like, that'd be, you know, a really cool thing for them to implement with Waterworld. I just don't know how you would do it. Like, I want to know how they did it back then. Because the only thing that I can think of is that they have someone in the water, but you just kind of walk around the front row of the uh, arena, and that sounds hella stupid. Like, back then, I'm sure that was cool because it was different, and it was in water, and it was an aquarium theme because it's water world, and yeah, that stadium is an aquarium theme. It's got, like, steampunk shit and big sharks and whatever all over the place. Mm -hmm. But, is that really what we want now? Would you well, want I'm that? Sure, I'm sure they would do a lot better than probably what they got then. Oh, I'm sure they would, too. I mean, that's just... But just the idea of, like, part of the maze actually go in by the waterfront, you know, and utilize that space to where you could do something would be freaking awesome. So you'd be super you'd be super excited about it if it did it. Yeah. Yeah, because we've been talking about it for the past five years that we've wanted them to do something with that. I mean, well, they I mean, did their... every maze they put there has been really cool. Yeah. Yeah, but you could put so much more in all that open space in there, you could almost do a Monster Aquarium haunt show. Oh, yeah, you totally could. Yeah. And, Com and actually utilize that venue for another show. Yeah, compared to Slaughter World. 
Yeah, Slaughter World. That was interesting. We'll get into that eventually. Yeah, that's... I, yeah. Um, so, are there any scare zones? No. It just says... Sorry, guys. Hot mazes, shows, and rides. It doesn't list any scare zones at this point. So then what were the shows again? Beetlejuice's Rock and Graveyard Review. Hell yeah. Creepy Animals. Circus of Freaks and the first year of Bill and Ted's Excellent Halloween Adventure. Damn. That, this, that show lineup is what we should be getting currently at yeah. the event. Like, the event now has gotten so bare on shows. Well, the only show that you really see is Jabberwockies now. Yeah, and it's like, if we were to have those four shows... I would easily go see three out of the four. I have not been to the Jabberwockies one time. <laughs> I enjoy the Jabberwockies, so we've been every time. Yeah. It's I a good no, show. I have no... Desire? Desire to watch the Jabberwockies. I, w- I will say, for people who don't have the desire to go see it, it's a good time for you to, like, sit down and take your moment for the yeah. night. I think yeah. I think my thing like I mean if we want to talk about that <laughs> um, I think the show's great the Jabberwockies are awesome but my big is- issue is it's not really horror related right and it's yeah. like yeah I mean don't get me wrong you know in their show they try to put in a little bit of horror element but it just falls short it's you don't see else. Jabberwockies and go oh shit that's like a horror themed show <laughs> like yeah. It doesn't jump out with that while, you know, Bill and Ted's Halloween adventure, you're like, oh, there's going to be, like, a Halloween show. Or, you know, Beetlejuice's review, you're like, oh, fuck, you know, Beetlejuice, that's a show. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, those were, I mean, Bill and Ted was such a freaking awesome show. It was so funny. Bill and Ted was an awesome show, and the fact that it ended because people got too social justice warrior is really sad. Mm-hmm. But, at the same time, not still does the hanging every year. <laughs> they made a joke about about Universal getting rid of uh, the Bill and Ted. The first year I went to Knott's, they made a joke about getting rid of Bill and Ted's, and it was amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean... I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Now they're not going to bring it back because of Bill and Ted 3, I think. Like, even Orlando stopped doing it. But, yeah, there was no win in that situation. If they don't do it... I think they messed up because they... Stopped doing it. (laughs) Well, they... But they stopped doing Bill and Ted, like, two weeks into the season. Yeah, which was horrible. Um, Because then they had nothing. So it was like... It was literally just mazes and scare zones, which... I think what's nice about the shows is it helps gobble up customers and it yeah. gives them a chance to kind of relax a little bit, which is great because at an event like that, you want some lows for the customer. You know, you want the lows to bring them down so that you can scare the crap, scare out, the of crap out of them, bring yeah. them back up. Because if you're trying to be at a constant high, you're not going to make that happen. Um. So going to uh, 1998 then. Okay, do you want another ride from 97? Oh, sure. So Jurassic Park, the ride. Uh, E.T. Adventure, and then the Back to the Future, the ride. Hell yeah. So it went from the show, from ba- or, uh, from the Backdraft show into the Back to the Future, the ride show, which I miss, honestly. Wait, uh, there are two different things, though. Backdraft and Back to the Future. Right. But yeah. you had one was a show that you you had. It says in here that Back to the Future took over for the backdraft ride. For oh, the, the show it so, took over for the show. So and, basically, they stopped running. Oh, that was nice. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> they um, stopped running backdraft and instead had Back to, back the, to the Future the ride. the ride open. So now moving okay. into '98, the haunt mazes were Clive Barker's. Freaks Maze. Oh, shit. Classic Creature Features. Oh, yeah. The Crypt Keeper's Screaming Room. Mm-hmm. An Alien Assault. 
So not yes. much change over, just a little bit of elaboration well, and add on. We got that Clyde Barker, <laughs> what does that say? Excuse me. Uh, Clyde Barker's Freaks, Human Curiosities, Unusual Oddities, and Freaks of Nature. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, does the Crypt Keeper want to say anything more this time? <laughs> it yeah. kind of sounds like the one from before. It's, um, it's It sounds like, because then the next one is like an alien one. Alien Assault. Which, yeah, I mean, they did an alien one the previous year, so it kind of sounds like they just... It went from a Area 51 to Alien Assault. Like they might have added some stuff, so they changed the names yeah, of the mazes. Or, yeah, like just... Right. Yeah. It which... went from Classic Monsters Maze to Creature Features. Yeah. The shows at that time were the ultimate tribute to Kiss. Oh shit. Okay. Chucky's Wedding Chapel. What? what? Slaughter World. Oh, oh there it is. <laughs> Bill and Ted's Excellent Halloween Adventure 2. Bring it back. And Carnival of Carnage. Nice. Interesting. And the same three rides from the year before. Cool. So, so Slaughter World. Slaughter <laughs> World is a very interesting <laughs> thing. It's essentially Water World, but this dominatrix chick kills all the good guys and, yeah. and wins. Um, and they basically use a lot of the water effects as blood. Yeah. A spectacular tidal wave of death-defying stunts, awesome explosions, and an ocean of thrills. A naughtier version from the day show. That's, yep, that's yep. what it is. Absolutely nailed it. Uh, um, pretty much, you if you've seen that show one time, you're good. Yeah. Because <laughs> when you went the second year and saw it again, and it was, like, the exact same show. Yeah, so it was like, that. well, this was a waste of time. <laughs> I remember it was an offer, or it was available two times for me, and we did not watch it the second year. Yeah. So I mean, if if you're getting a lot of new time, like a lot of new customers, yeah. that have never done it. Shirts, sure another thing to help fill in the time. Yeah. Um, especially during this time where the event only has four mazes. Yeah. Um, you really need the shows to help balance, balance it out and fill in those those dead spots. Because sure. I'm sure at this time too, the park probably wasn't as slammed. Yeah. So you probably got through the maces pretty quick. Yeah, I would imagine. Pretty fast. Yeah. Um, I wonder what well, Chucky's Wedding Chapel was all Yeah, about. Chucky's Wedding Chapel sounds super interesting. Chucky and his bride Tiffany host nightly weddings and audience participation is mandatory. Huh. Interesting. interesting. <laughs> um... What about Terra Tram or anything like that? Does it say? It says nothing about Terra Tram. Um, and it says oh, Back to the Future, wow. ET, and Jurassic Park, and that's it. Wow, so they literally, because even last year there wasn't anything on the Terra Tram, was there? I don't think you said anything, so. Once they rebooted it, they didn't even have Terror Tram going, it sounds like. Last year was Terror Tram. With He's the talking clown, about isn't it? as far as our No, 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 no I'm talking right about now. on the timeline. Oh. For 92. So 92, oh, yeah. there was Terror Tram. 97, there was none. 98, there was none. Oh, wow. So, so they, yeah. Hadn't, yeah, they hadn't brought it back yet. Interesting. Terror Tram doesn't come back until 2006. Oh, oh shit. Wow. So when, when Murdy and them. Took it over. Took it over is when it came back. So. Wow. Now we move into 99. Okay, um, so 99. 99. Moving into 99. Haunted mazes are Clive Barker's Hell, the thrilling, chilling world of Rob Zombie. 
The Mummy, Creature Features, and Cleaver's Meat Locker. Yeah, okay, so Creature Feature. Two years. The Mummy, <laughs> I can tell you right now, The Mummy, this is the first year you're seeing a year-round attraction be used for Halloween Horror Nights. That Mummy Maze, I'm guaranteeing you, was the Mummy thing that was there year-round. Was that in the same location where uh, House of Horrors used to be? So yeah. where, yeah, so no. where all of them were. At. No, where does it say it was at? This is. It doesn't list where it's at here, but it's not reoccurring at this point. It huh. says, "Encounter the actual terrors that traumatized you in Universal Pictures smash hit movie." shows some pictures, but it doesn't show where the light was. I'd be surprised if it wasn't the year-round one, but what does it say about the Rob Zombie one? World of what Rob Zombie? It says... Alright, let's see. 99. Thrilling, chilling world of Rob Zombie. Tunnel deep inside the most depraved realm of all, Rob Zombie's brain, where the living dead reign supreme. Damn, so I wonder if it was like his Alice Cooper maze. Probably. Fuck. Which means it probably would have been like an insane, like, gore fest. Like living <laughs> dead girl. Oh, dark. shit, that would have been oh, badass. Dude, you could do so much with Rob Zombie songs. I kind of wish that they would have almost done something like that at Universal. Oh, like, damn, you literally straight walk into his head. Yeah, they had, like, his mouth yeah, that you, like, I don't walk know if you into. Yeah, you see that, Jimmy. Holy shit, that's fucking awesome. Bring that back. <laughs> yeah, for real. Fucking bring that back, like, right now. Um, okay, so that's the second one. What about Clyde Barker's Hell? Does it say anything? Clive Barker's Hell, dare to enter the putrid put of infernal damnation from the wizard of wickedness. Huh. So none of his are specifically saying that Hellraiser's involved. Yeah. I wonder if they're, like, just complete originals. These are all, like, sh- they all sound like short stories. Yeah. That he has written. Oh, possibly. Um, okay, then what's the other one? One, The other one was Creature Features, which was a, just like a returning from the year before. But it was like a meat locker or something. No, 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 no. Uh, that was something separate. It was Creature Features, and then it lists um, Cleaver's Meat Locker, which they, was bloodthirsty butchers hack their way through various cuts of meat, including human flesh. So they're doing the cannibalistic yeah. slaughterhouse. Thing. So this is when they first had five mazes then. Yeah. yeah. So they hit five at this point. Because uh, Creature Features at this point in 99 says step through the movie screen to rub elbows and other body parts with classic universal monsters like Frankenstein, Dracula, and Wolfman. Interesting. So, so that one was more universal of a universal monster maze. Yeah. Sounds like that they almost have had that every year at this point. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Do they... No Terror Tram, right? No nope. Terror Tram. What shows do they have? Chucky's Insult Emporium. It's, oh, they had a... That's the first year that they've had that, I No, bet. they didn't. I'm sorry. No, that, yeah. It was a previous 99 year, 99 was though. Chucky's Insult Emporium. So they had it as a result of the wedding chapel, I bet. And then the second show was Animal House of Horrors. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Bill and Ted's Excellent Halloween Adventure 3. Hell yeah. And Carnival of Carnage. Nice. What is Carnival of Carnage? I, that's, um, that was created by, I don't know if at this point, if Florida had already created Hang Jack on. the no, Clown. No, like 2007. When they created Jack the Clown? Yeah, I think it, so. It says, uh, freak out at the sight of this gory collection of sword swallowers, glass eaters, and human pincushion pin cushions torturing themselves into a tizzy. So it's just like a side show. So it's like a, yeah, side show. Um, interesting. So that is the 90s and then 
points of the two thousand. Nice. Which starts getting lengthy. Damn. Haunted mazes. The Undertaker No Mercy. Oh, there, there it is. is. Yeah. Buffy and Angel Hellmouth Haunt in the Mummy Cube. Rob Zombie's The House of a Thousand Corpses Maze. And that was in 2000? 2000. Yeah. So that was before the film even came out. Yeah. And then Clive Barker's Harvest. And then Theater of Blood. And this was the first year that they had a scare zone. Ooh. Interesting. So what's the description for The Undertaker's Maze? The Undertaker, No Mercy... A raw, in-your-face horror experience based on the WWE superstar, The Undertaker. <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> Bring it back. That Let's was do the, it again. That's the creepy Undertaker, too. Yeah. Okay. I'm all in. What's next? Buffy and Angel Hellmouth Hunt. Oh, my God. Okay. Basically, <laughs> the guests become a part of an episode of Buffy where they explore some of the sets from Buffy including Buffy's dorm in Sunnydale Park. They walk through those sets and experience them. Then they go through a subway, and when they get off the subway, they ended up in Los Angeles in Angel's World. They experience Angel's apartment and some of the other settings from that show. Super exciting. Woo! Yeah, that doesn't really sound much like a maze, as much as like a, like a tour, almost. Um... Rob Zombie's The House of a Thousand Corpses Maze, based yeah. on Zombie's upcoming debut as a director and screenwriter. So yeah, like you said, before the maze was even out. Before the movie, yeah. Or before the movie, yeah. Three years before the movie, actually. That's pretty intense. intense. So right. it makes me wonder, like, if he'd done the maze and he literally just pulled his ideas from the maze... And created the film well, based on that. Well, it says it's based on his movie, so he obviously... They had some idea as to what they wanted and what it was going to look like. They had to have a... I wonder how much detail they put right. in that maze. Was it like a Crimson Peak-style maze? Or was it like a... From uh, the pictures, it was pretty badass. You can see pictures? Yeah. Does it look like what it was in, like, 2008, eight nine? Shit. What, is this, what is this website that you're at? Uh, HalloweenHorrorNights.Fandom.Com Interesting. I mean, they literally, it literally looked like Rob Zombie the made fucking an movie. actual movie what? based on the haunted maze. The movie was called House of a Thousand Corpses and even got a sequel titled The Devil's Reject. It's listed as trivia for that. Huh. Okay. Damn. What's next? So next is Clive Barker's Harvest. What is that? Third year in a row with uh, Clive Barker. Damn, he's says, heavily involved, yeah. The description says, You'll walk through a hole in the wall of a mausoleum leading into the ground where something is reclaiming the dead to incubate its young. Nice. Ooh, sounds like a vampire house. Um, okay. And then last but not least... Uh, well, yeah, is um, Theater of Blood. A vault of universal <laughs> classic horror films where you'll find yourself prey to the most merciless celluloid slashers and fiends. Uh, of course they came back. <laughs> that was definitely their go-to maze. It's like, we have this every year. <laughs> the, uh... mashup thing that's kind of been their go-to throughout the 90s here yeah <laughs> into the year 2000 um scare zone is next yeah what's the scare zone nightmare creatures 2 there was a one yeah <laughs> that was my thought <laughs> yeah but it doesn't list that and it says the description says help destroy the evil adam crawley and his hideous board of lab experiment creatures as they prepare to take over the world beginning with you. Alright. So like mutants and like, you know, lab experiment type of creatures. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, I can imagine, is 
pretty rad. Uh, you probably have them running out like all over the streets and stuff. Does it say how big the scare zone was? No, it does not. So they probably took up quite a bit of the lot, you would think. Or, yeah. Yeah. You know. Shows for 2000. Chucky's Insult Emporium, Carnival of Carnage, and Animal House of Horrors. Damn, no Bill and Ted's? Damn, so no Bill and Ted's. No there. Bill and Ted's then. Wow. So then we don't have a Halloween Horror Nights until 2006 after that. So okay. Like six well, still, so with 2000, though, that kind of sounds like a little bit of a rough year. <laughs> I mean, yeah. The Undertaker Maze and like House of a Thousand Corpses kind of sound like the the big one I mean well I guess Clyde you, Barker you say that until you hear the lineup from 2006 oh I know the lineup well, yeah, from 2006 because now you're touching to the point of when we're starting to yeah when well, we've go. started to attend um, so we can discuss in detail what that was that event was like when we come back to it mm-hmm. next week we will discuss Knott's Berry Farm its origins which is more extensive, but we, you know, we're not going to do like a three hour podcast. No, we, we, we'll make it very quick and to the point. Um, we'll talk about uh, some of their more well known houses and when maybe they first kind of came into life because they do their lineup every year since it's. Yeah, they creation. started in 72. Encyclopedia. You do yeah. a whole season. <laughs> you can do a whole season on that. So, what we're gonna do is uh, next week we'll do that, and then we'll do Great America, and then Six Flags, uh, respectively, as well. And then once we get into years that we go, we may only get through like 2006, 2007 total. Because what we'll do is we'll do uh, an episode dedicated to. Halloween Horror Nights The Mazes in an episode for Scare Zones and Shows. And then we will go 2006 um, Mazes for Not Scary Farm and then we'll do Scare Zones and Shows. So each year produces eight weeks and that's pretty close to uh, a, a little over three quarters of what a season will be. So once we find a good spot we'll take a break for season and the holiday as far as what we've been talking about but it was cool to uh, kind of imagine what some of those mazes were going to be like that we sadly will never get to see yeah no that's that's like the big bummer and I mean it really makes you appreciate you know YouTube and this whole time era of really of everybody wanting to film everything and put it up you know with social media so I mean, looking back, you could find videos on any maze at this point on, you know? Yeah, if you never get to go to Halloween Horror Nights, like, I've done Florida once and it was amazing, but that's the only way that um, we can fantasize about what some of those mazes will ever have been like, like mazes. And that, like, I can tell you, going to Florida... I've watched YouTube videos of Florida so long, I freaked out when I, like, met Jack the Clown and <laughs> the director and the caretaker and all these characters. Awesome icons that they've that created. I have never... I, I had never seen in person before that, and I already felt like they were, like, characters I had known my whole life. That's how much I've watched the YouTube and wanted... <laughs> to go to Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando. Mm-hmm. And to do that for their 20-year reunion was super rad. I hope next year to do it for their 30-year reunion. Nice. Um, I feel like that would be a really cool one to go to. Oh, yeah. But that being said, there's a bunch of podcasts about Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando. Halloween Horror Nights, is it this one or the next one? Uh, two more. Going, right? Two more. Um, Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood doesn't get a whole lot of love podcasting wise and neither do a lot of the California haunted attractions that are super fun to go to so which is very surprising because we really have as far as like event wise 
we do have quite a bit here in in the state. Yeah, for sure. And so, I mean, we're very fortunate to have so many. Yeah, no, we have more haunted events than we never have time to, to do. Well, I mean, and you guys know that just from doing your your haunt tour, just from this area, you guys literally fill up your whole calendar yeah. in October and. You know, it's it's crazy how many haunts just in the general area there are to hit. Yeah, so. for sure, without question. Um, and with that, looking forward to uh, to well, diving into these later years. Well, to dive into the later years, but next week to dive into Knott's Berry Farm yeah. history. Uh, this is now your guys' favorite thing uh, over Halloween Hornets. Yeah. You guys like knots better? Um, yeah, I would say I've appreciated knots, and they've definitely have stepped their game up to the point to where their event as a whole definitely exceeds Universal. Interesting. That's interesting. So we'll learn on the next episode of Hunt Core History. We will learn about the origin of knots and get caught, get us caught up on uh, Sars highlights up until this point in Hunt Core History.